All right, guys, we got another easy one for you today. We're going to take a look at how to deploy your Node.js application to AWS's Elastic Beanstalk. AWS is Amazon's web service, and it's awesome. They have so many services for you to use, but in this specific case, we want to host a Node.js application specifically that uses TypeScript. Now, there's a couple ways to deploy this with uh, AWS Elastic Beanstalk. The main way you're going to want to do this is uploading it through a zip file or through the Elastic Beanstalk CLI. I'm just gonna show you how to use the actual Amazon UI to do it. It's very intuitive, so there's not much to it. There are also ways to actually upload your project that's not compiled and get AWS to compile the TypeScript for you, but that involves using a lot of Elastic Beanstalk extensions and configuration, and we're just gonna keep it simple today by uploading our project directly through the UI. All right, guys, let's get into it. Go ahead and navigate to Elastic Beanstalk inside of your AWS console and click Create Application. Go ahead and give the application a name and underneath it, you can add some tags if you want to identify your services. You don't have to if you don't want to, but this is something you can do. For the platform, what you're gonna to wanna to pick is you're gonna to wanna to pick Node.js and you're also gonna have the selection of different Node.js versions. If you have a version of Node.js that you would like to use, select it here. Otherwise, just leave it on the default for now. And then for application code, you're gonna have two boxes, a sample application or upload your code. If you don't have an application created, go ahead and use the sample here. And it's a great way to play around with Elastic Beanstalk, some settings, some configuration. It's an awesome start, but we're gonna to look to upload our own project. So select upload your code and it's going to ask you to choose a file. So we actually have to go create that file right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to Visual Studio Code to our project and we're going to compile our TypeScript project into a normal JavaScript and then put it in a zip file and upload it. So inside of my package uh, JSON, I'm going to add a build script where I just run TSC to compile my TypeScript project. My tsconfig.json already has all of my configuration in it and it's basically the default tsconfig that you get when you use TSC in it. The only thing I added was an output directory to compile my JavaScript to, which in my case happens to be build. Go ahead and run an npm run build and then you should see the build folder pop up this is the folder we're going to be interested in because the node.js on aws is going to be looking for javascript not typescript it also should be noted that just like heroku aws is going to try to inject a port when running any sort of web service so make sure in your config file you are getting your port variable from the process.env.port and listening to that port respectively inside of your main server file so I'm gonna navigate over to my Explorer and I am going to create a zip file and I'm going to exclude the source and node modules folder because I don't need them because everything is already built inside of my build folder. I'm gonna name my zip file and then I'm gonna go back to the UI and I'm gonna hit choose file and upload that specific file and then create my application. The first time we create the application, you're gonna see this little console window here pop up and it's gonna take a couple minutes between three and five minutes, depending on what time of day it is. And any service associated with your Elastic Beanstalk application is gonna pop up here and you're gonna see it being spun up with the timestamps on the side. So let's meet back up when this is finally fully deployed. Now you can see that it's successfully launched your environment. So go ahead on the left side of the screen, you can go ahead and click whatever your environment is. Mine is this TypeScript app dash ENV. And you can see on the left that there's a health check saying that everything's okay. And on the right, it shows you what platform you're using. The recent events tab on the bottom just shows you recent events that are happening with your project. So go ahead and click the link at the top that's provided to you that will open a new window and go to your project. Mine ends up going to this not found and that's because my basic root directory doesn't actually have a get request associated with it. I only have one route in this project and that's gonna be forward slash ping. So if I type forward slash ping, you can see that I get my hello world message. So my project is working correctly. Now you can see that there's this warning down below and this is happening because I don't have a route serving just forward slash. Basically, if you type in the URL to go to my project, you're gonna get not found or you're not gonna get a result that's 200, 201 or 304. You're gonna get an error. And AWS doesn't quite understand why and that's because we're actually hosting an API. So a way around this is actually to actually give your health check or some sort of basic route that's showing like your server status, a forward slash as the route and just return a 200. So we're gonna fix that in a second, but first let's take a look at how to actually deploy a new version of your project. So I'm gonna go back to my project 
change my health check from forward slash ping to forward slash hello. And then I'm gonna go through the same process of zipping up the project after I build it and uploading it back to AWS Elastic Beanstalk. So once I've zipped it up in the UI, you're gonna click that upload and deploy button right in the middle of your page. And then you're going to choose your file and then choose a version name for this. It's gonna upload it. And then the exact same thing is gonna happen as before. Now that the upload is finished, I'm gonna go and test it. You should get a message not found for the main route, but when you do a forward slash hello, everything should work. So now let's actually go ahead and fix that health check. And what we're gonna do is just basically copy and paste our health check route, and then give the route a path of a forward slash, just so that when AWS does its health check, it actually gets a 200 instead of a 400 or 500. Now that we've added that, Go ahead and build your project one more time, zip it up, and then use the UI to upload it again, and then I'll meet you on the other side. The last thing that you should know, that if there's ever an error deploying your project, what you should do is you should go to the left side of your screen here and go to the logs. You could request the last 100 lines, which will show you the last 100 lines of the logs, or you can get the full logs and get the entire logs from the EC2 instance. Either or is good, depending on how complicated your project is. But let's take a look at the last 100 lines to see what happens. When you get the last 100 lines, basically the file that you are most interested in is going to be the var log web.stdout.log. This file is going to contain the actual logs of your Node.js application. And not just the one you deployed. If there aren't 100 lines, it will grab any of the 100 lines from before. So you can see the project when we first uploaded it, where it was trying to hit that forward slash route, it was always returning a 404 because we didn't have that. But if we scroll down, you can see that in the end, the health check is now returning a 200 and we won't get that error anymore. So that's how you take care of that. Anyways, that's a basic deploy to AWS Elastic Beanstalk. Again, all we're doing is just running our built Node.js application. It's gonna be all JavaScript because we compile it from our TypeScript. So there's nothing fancy going on here. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.